Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today we're going to go through how to use FM synthesis inside um, Nano Studio 2 and the Obsidia synth. So let's kick off, but before I do that, please remember to subscribe unless you have already done so, as that helps with uh, growing the channel and bringing more videos like this one and others. So let's start. So I have deleted the, uh, the tracks which were there in the project. Let's add a new one, the default one, which is an Obsidian default. And um, uh, let's go to edit. We have a type analog, uh, which is set. So we have a so um, yeah, waveform. Yeah, I'll just leave it as there with a scale minor. That's fine. So let's change the type here. To FM synthesis and as you can hear so now we have a nice sine wave so let me start first of all to say that I'm not going to cover the controls which I already covered through the analog uh, synthesis so that the voices velocity and the voice settings and also these settings over here which are uh, really standards as per any type of synthesis what I'm going to focus on is the controls here for FM synthesis so as you can see, we have uh, three operators, operator one, two, and three. Because of the configuration or the algorithms which has been set up, um, they all three can be carriers, so generators of sounds, but only operator number one and two can be modulators, i.e. Op operator one can modulate operator two and three, operator two can modulate operator three, but operator three cannot modulate anything, really. Okay, then the next thing that you can see is that you have three outputs, output one, two, and three. So at the moment you hear sound coming out from output number three. If I was to decrease that, uh, click and hold and scroll down, you don't have any output because the three outputs are down to zero. I can increase output number two. Again, you hear the same uh, sine wave because that is how operator two has been configured so far and the same on output number one. Okay, then what you can also see is that when I click on output or connection, i.e. any of the boxes which are not operators, you see that the screen changes here. Okay, so let's click on output number one now, where we have that set to maximum to 99. So you have two selection here, you have curve and scaling. So on curve, you can set your ADSR, so attack the K sustain and release. So you can say, right, let's have an attack there. We have more decay. We reduce the uh, sustain. Then you have release here, which can be infinite if it is a max, or you can reduce that like so, so it's not infinite anymore. As you select each control, it gives you also the option here to change the curvature, the type of curve that... Uh, you, you are using so for each of the control as you select it of course with the exception of the sustain as you move up and down the sustain that is not a curve is a fixed value now let's increase more the attack to hear the effect right and um, as you can see we have more attack very straightforward now you have an option for a half set as well here which you just increase the entire envelope uh, uh, shape so that it start higher as a level and that is of course if you prefer to work like that if you're looking for that type of envelope the other thing you can see here is an option for scaling so if you click on scaling you have um, the choice to set how velocity and keys respond to level as output and also the time for the envelope so level of the envelope and time for the envelope so let's try so let's uh, click and hold here where it said this is zero and let's move it to around the um, C2 as per keyboard below. Right, okay, let's say that we increase this velocity like so. So in this case, you will find that as I move to um, up and down here of the key, it will respond differently. See? As I go slower down or further up the key, it will increase the volume because that is the curvature that I set. Of course, I can go also to the opposite, do the other way around. 
So starting from the top. And as we move down or half of the key, it will decrease the level. Okay, so you can do the same, but for the timing as well. And so to see this, let's increase the velocity like so. Uh, sorry, move the dial to the velocity right to the right hand side. Let's go back to curvature. Let's see what happens when I click at the very top of the key. And let's, uh, or at the bottom, depending on how you see the screen. And let's go further up or, or down to the bottom of the screen. You see it's much, much slower. Why, um, if I have a lower velocity, look, it's faster. And the same, you can apply the same concept on keys. Okay. So you can go to key, establish where the, um, the selection of the point of the key is so that you can say after that, change the response to key. So after G, uh, C2, the volume will start to decrease as I move to upwards to keys. Actually, to listen the better, let's remove the attack so that it's easier to listen. And as I move uh, further up, you will hear that um, the uh, volume is decreasing. And to verify that, let's change the key setting here. You can hear the volume is going up. So you can do the same on the envelope as well for the key. So you can say after C2, the curvature is going down. And um, let's go back to the curve and let's increase the attack. And let's try. So look at the speed there. And as I move up, you see it's much faster. Okay. So and if I go further up, even faster. Right. As instead, if I move down, is lower. So really, you can use scaling to set how velocity and keys affect the level or the timing for the envelope. So remember that as is very useful. And you can that you can do that for output and for all the different connection, including where you have FB for feedback. Okay, so the next thing to show you is how you can set operators. So let's um, choose operator number one, let's click on it. And what you can see here is that you can set the frequency ratio. So at the moment it's set to one. Actually, let's remove the, um, the uh, like so, the attack, that's better. So you can go up and down here as a frequency ratio. You can do the same here, but um, with for finer uh, refinement. The other thing you can do as well, let me reset this to zero. You can click and hold on the operator, move it up and down. It will increase that frequency ratio, which is really nice. Of course, when that is down to zero, like in this case, you don't hear anything because uh, is um, it has a frequency ratio of zero. So there's no output which, which is generated. Now, you have and let's reset this to one and uh, let's reset uh, and let's let me show you what detune does it just detune it but this comes very handy i'll show you in a moment why and of course you can choose the type of wave so in parabola triangle etc you what it says fb is that is for feedback so you can self modulate the, modulate the operator so you can do that for operator one and operator two. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's go to the effects, enable the reverb. Nice, and let's give it also some chorus. Right. Okay, so you can self-modulate using the feedback. The other thing you can do now is start to uh, bring in other operators. So let's increase output two. And what you can do, you can follow the line here. You can have operator one, modulate operator two, if you increase the value here on this box. So click, hold, and move up. Let's increase the frequency here. Of 
course, you can go more fancy. So you can say modulate operator number one will impact operator number three as well. Let's increase the output, the further output for operator three. And the same for operator two. can create very sophisticated sounds. Now let's decrease uh, output number three and let's uh, increase the output number two. Let's decrease output number one. Let's reset uh, the feedback on operator uh, one to zero. Let's set this to maximum so that the operator one affect the maximum operator two. So what we hear is only operator two modulated by operator one. Okay, now let's go to operator number one. Let's set it down to zero. Now you hear just the sine wave that is coming from operator two. But here's a nice thing. When you have uh, operator number one set to zero, you can use it as an LFO using the detuning or the detune dial. So. So nice, isn't it? So as you can see, quite a lot of possibility. And this is just another FM uh, synthesis, another synthesis inside Obsidian, um, the synth inside the Studio 2. I hope you enjoyed and found this useful. So now you know how to use FM synthesis inside Obsidian. I'll see you at the next video. Thank you. Bye.